morning campers how the devil are you what's going on you say wearing a hat baseball cap well it's as you can probably see by my scrunched up face it's fucking sunny today oh I do feel like spring is finally on its way and uh, as you catch me uh, do my normal walk just to get back into fitness along the uh, banks of the Irwell and then back along the canal um, it's mild it's, it's really mild and uh, I, I do honestly feel like um, spring has finally reared its head let's just wait now and hopefully in the next few days and weeks We'll have buds opening on flowers and bushes and trees and uh, things starting to grow again. Animals starting to procreate and diseases starting to go away. Let's hope and pray for that. Um, so, here we are. Not half as busy as yesterday, um, thank God. Um, still fairly busy with walkers and cyclists and runners uh, but not the two or three way traffic that was going on yesterday but who knows which, uh, wait till I get to the canal perhaps before I say anything like that um, I realised yesterday after my long ramble about where places to live and how to choose where you're going to live and the type of accommodation that you're going to live in that um, th there's obviously a, a lot more to the story than, than that and, and there were other things that I intended to say but, but didn't um, and one of those things that I think I'll touch on today and we'll see where it leads He's okay over there. I do worry about people just tinkling on the edge of precipices or drops into water. Um, maybe I just need my glasses and he's fishing or something. Oh, we're having a spliff. Okay, so um, one of the things that uh, I was reminded of yesterday, and I've, I there's a good friend who um, works at a local pub um, and she has she came to mind because she's she was brought up um, on the same housing estate as the one in which she now lives and there's there's a whole different um, kettle of fish to there's a whole different spin on your choice of where to live of course if that's if that's you and that applies to millions of people across the UK at least and probably maybe even more so in other countries like Italy for example where family and community are so important or more important than they are here perhaps um, and one of the things um, that's unique to that kind of person is the fact that they are often they often are born and grow, grow up in the same, sometimes the same house, sometimes the same street, or at least certainly sometimes in the same area, neighborhood, um, into which the one they were born, and then their kids and their kids after that continue that trend. Um, so, this last I know down the pub, for example, her grandmother that lives down the road drinks in the same pub as, as her and her mum. Um, cousins and other members of the extended family live in surrounding streets in the same area. Everybody knows each other, nobody's going to move far. Um, you may well uh, end up inheriting or taking over property that your relatives um, had before you and con continuing the family line like that, whether it is rented or bought. Um, council property or private 
Um, so there you go, uh, and that that must be so such a nice thing in a way, such a, a nice uh, warm feeling that you must have inside you because you, you know you, you're never going to leave that area. That everybody that you need in your life is around you and just down the road or just within a shouting distance. Um, and uh, obviously, I imagine that comes with its the pros and cons. So, you know, um, do you feel smothered by family and friends? Um, are you constantly being, um, not spied on, but perhaps, but um, are, are people in your family, your relatives, constantly on your back watching what you're doing, telling you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. Um, I don't think I would like that very much. Most of us, uh, when we reach teenage years and then and eventually fly the nest, we're quite glad to have that space, that freedom um, from relatives and prying eyes and enjoy the freedom that that entire, uh, allows you to have. Um, while at the same time probably forging stronger, more distant bonds with your parents and uh, siblings, etc. Um, so, I would, I would honestly say that my family has has completely gone the opposite, the opposite route to um, my, my friend from the pub, and from the moment that any of us. Um, can remember we've always been moving house moving to different parts of the country moving to different part types of accommodation um, that's just while we were kids then since we've all left home we've all gone our different ways my brother has I would I would probably guess once a year at least once every two years perhaps sometimes longer, um, moved because of his job, a dairy farmer, um, not happy with the job or wanted to move to New Zealand as he did at one point and emigrated to New Zealand. Um, he must have moved house, moved house, you know, literally moved house, but uh, as many times as me and, and that's about 20 for me. Um, again, different parts of the country, you know, um, as much as I could be critical of my dad, essentially, not, not my mum, but my dad being the one that instigated moves all over the country to different towns and houses, constantly disrupting um, schooling and um, friend making as we were kids. Um, that, you know, we, we never put any roots down anywhere. And as a result, perhaps that's uh, contributed to why I'm here now walking by myself. Uh, <laughs> um, but we touched on that another day and that's another story. So, wow, where was I? Um, yeah, uh, you know, as much as I might blame my dad for, for causing um, elements that have made me now what I am, um, in, in a negative way, uh, I have done exactly the same, albeit only living by myself. Um, and so, you know, I've only got myself to blame for having moved so many times. Um, and my sister, to a certain extent, too, um, working in different countries, Scotland and um, various parts of the UK. Um, doing jobs that involve lots of traveling to see clients and things like that, to visit, visiting different cities, not really spending that much time at home. Um, so, yeah, so where was I before? Loads of people and a main road got in the way. Um, well, I was talking about the, the benefits of um, of growing up and living in the same area that you were brought up in and that family tradition continuing somewhat um, and families 
staying fa fairly stable and able to look after each other and you know, all of the benefits that that entails. Um, grandma gets a bit older, um, or granddad, you can start caring for them a lot, a lot more when they're just literally a couple of yards down the road instead of um, miles and miles away. It's much easier. Uh, the family spirit, the community spirit, um, and also the fact that you know you you know the area, you, you know where all the shops are, where all the people you need to be in contact with are, all the facilities, doctors, hospitals, um, dentists, um, people that can help you shift something out of your garden because it's too heavy. The, the list is endless of um, the network of. Um, contacts that you will develop after generations of um, growing up in the same area like that. So there are lots of benefits, too many to mention here. Um, so are there any benefits to moving around and going from place to place, not really settling down or putting any roots down anywhere? Yeah, of course there are um, lots of disadvantages, of course. Um, the opposite of everything that we've just talked about um, but some clear dis some clear advantages in the fact that you are um, much more worldly wise uh, I, I hate using that word wise because it's it insinuates that someone has has reached the pinnacle of, of everything they need to know and it's um, nobody is ever wise, um, people just get wiser um, and certainly moving in from place to place, living in different places helps you to become wiser. Um, you, you meet more people for a start, you meet more different types of people, you meet people in different areas, different parts of the city in the village, uh, different parts of the country, uh, people from all walks of life and um, the more people you meet that inevitably um, makes you wiser. And um, so, oh God, I really need to find somewhere else to walk. Train, next journey must be on a train. Get on a train, allowed to or not, and just, bugger off into the hills somewhere where I can do whatever I want to do without people interfering all the time and and probably not have any reception but like we're saying downside to everything um, so yeah it certainly makes you it gives you a um, it gives you so much more by moving into different places experiencing new cultures, new places, new foods, new people, uh, new walks of life, new ways of thinking about things. Um, I think you can spot people that have travelled as well. And uh, uh, we always talk about the fact that um, if, you've, um, if you're well travelled, you know, it's meant to be a, it's a quality, isn't it, that we talk about, that you, if you're well travelled, then um, you've obviously you've seen more of the world and, um, and embraced more in your life instead of being very narrow-minded and, and um, fixed on what's immediately around you. It makes you more open to um, de de appreciating different um, ways of thinking and looking at life and different values and, um, and customs. And, and I think that's also true for travelling within your, your own country. Um, you know, I, you, I, there's probably no difference, but, but perhaps there is, perhaps there is a difference. Um, travelling within your own country helps you to understand your, your own country better. And the, the variations in ideas and beliefs and um, poverty or wealth and you know, a myriad other um, factors that you could take into account when you've, when you've lived in lots of different places within the same island or the same border. Um, 
Uh, and so perhaps it is slightly different to um, being world travelled worldwide. Um, certainly you could say that if you'd visited other English speaking countries in the Western world, so for example Canada, USA, Australia even, um, New Zealand, you know, those, those countries, then uh, perhaps you get a broader aspect of what the English speaking peoples are like in the, in the Western world. Um, and certainly if you were to then extend that to countries where English is a language that is spoken or, or one of the main languages like India for example, um, you'd, you'd get a different perspective, you'd be able to uh, engage quite well because of your language similarities, you could get engage quite well um, with the natives there and um, really get to know, you know, the, the English language is, there's so many descriptive words in the English language, one of the languages in the world with the most descriptive language in it. Um, so to be able to communicate with, with people in other English speaking countries, even if um, that's not the main language that's spoken amongst the people there, um, it gives you a good insight into how they behave and what their beliefs are, their values, what they think about, um, what's important to them in life, um, what they think of other countries and the, the rest of the world. Uh, um, so yeah, so uh, it may, perhaps even more so than um, being well travelled in other countries. Obviously, if you speak Spanish or you speak French or Portuguese, uh, you know, going to South Africa, South America, um, for example, um, you, you might get similar ideas by travelling extensively in those countries there and um, and open up your mind to the rest of the world which can only be a good thing um, so a lot of meandering there as usual and um, meandering and rambling and and a bit picked up the pace a bit to try and get away, uh, away from those people that seem to have caught up with me behind me and uh, talking and walking fast is I'm out of breath but uh, oh, you don't get across the other side yeah. right beautiful day today beautiful day what a joy to be out uh, with uh, two big thick woolly coats in my bag that I had to take off almost immediately and um, I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying it very much and I'm a three quarters done so I know that the end is near what a shame anyway, so there we go That was uh, I had no plan with where I wanted to go with that um, ramble today um, just, just some thoughts about um, the pros and cons of staying put or um, getting about and certainly one of, there's several aspects to this of course but one of those aspects is the fact that you do get variations on the theme so you do get people that are very well traveled um, around the world and uh, through luck or being a financially able to or whichever way they did it backpacking or however however they actually financed their travels or whether it was because parents worked abroad or they grew up half and half with that dual nationalities whichever way it happened um, you do get people that have experienced living in other countries or certainly visiting other countries and um, and have only lived in one place in the UK and that, that baffles me because uh, the, 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 their the minds are open in one respect and closed in the other and that, that baffles me that 
that, and that taints their, their view of um, things that happen in the UK and the way things are, the way things work, the politics, the, uh, the government, the, uh, the NHS, everything else, it, it taints their views on things because they've only lived in one place in the UK. Whether they're well travelled and know what other countries are like or not, you know? And, um, uh, and maybe that's also true the other way around, where people have, have actually travelled, like me, quite extensively through the UK and experienced different microculture, um, but, but not been able to um, explore the rest of the world as much as, as they'd like to. And, um, and are eager and keen, like me, to, to get out and experience that more. Uh, personally, I've only really been throughout the boundaries of Europe, as um, most of the countries in Europe, but, but only Europe. And, you know, thank God we're not in the European Union anymore, because each individual country in Europe, even though it's such a small place, each country needs to retain its own flavour. Um, it's such a unique place. Uh, and not become amalgamated into huge states like um, the United States or the USSR once was um, and is now breaking apart sadly because of it well not sadly, gladly so there you go a ramble with offshoots and I'm sure there will be something else that I think I've to talk about that I haven't mentioned because I am an old git and my memory is not what it used to be